Okay, we should be live streaming, I think. Is it going? <laughs> I think it's going. Let me know. Someone says image needs more ray tracing. Can't do that for you, sorry. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is testing the cards versus Linus's score that he posted to the wrong thing. So let me know if you can hear me, first of all. Can you, can you hear? <laughs> uh, let me know if, if you can hear stuff. Looks like people say yes. And then we'll get going pretty shortly here. I'm just uh, sending out a tweet to let everyone know that we're going. People are saying it's working. Um, show us the rig. Yes, we will do that momentarily. Uh, we are live. OK, I'm just tweeting that out. So uh, here's what happened. That's a lot, of, a lot of chat messages. Here's what happened. Um, Linus, or Linus's team, I should say, tweeted, uh, <laughs> tweeted out that they, I don't know, what did they say? Mike, Mike dot, 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 drop. So they tweeted out, they said Mike drop, and they posted a screenshot of a, uh, a score that was ahead of both mine and Jay's, but I looked at it, and uh, it was a single card benchmarks. So I, I don't know if they didn't get the memo or what, but w my single card score was from like six months ago when I challenged them. So a bit of a latent response, but we're happy they responded. Don't get me wrong. Thank you, Linus's team and or Linus for jumping in, responding. They actually posted their video on Floatplane. And uh, if you have it, I think it is called, I don't have it open anymore. I think it's called We Beat the Ron OC Record or something like Beat the Ron World Record. So they're, they're fully aware of it. But uh, if you want to check it out, I guess it'll be coming to their main channel soon. And uh, before it comes to their main channel, though, we're going to beat their new high score for single card, which I wasn't competing in because <laughs> I didn't know it was a thing. Uh, so we're going to beat that today. And then we're going to go back to dual card testing with our ice bucket. And uh, that's, um, that's when we'll be going through uh, the final tests here until I, I can tear it down and get back to normal reviews and stuff like that. So uh, OK. And what's, what's going on in chat? I'm waiting for everything to fill up for a bit, and then we'll get going. Uh, so just checking, seeing what chat says. What CPU is this? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you will, you'll have to figure it out yourself. Uh, all right. I, we want blood. That that might be a little extreme. Uh, I don't know how a blood cooling loop would do, though. But I'd be willing to try it if it's better. All right, so a couple things in chat here. Did you see Der Bauer's score? Yes, of course. I actually I spoke with Roman with Der Bauer. Um, I was up till 7 a.m. that night. He was up in Taiwan until, well, I guess it was 7 p.m. his time. Uh, and so he told me that he was about to post the score. He showed me the score. Uh, it was at the time only about 100 or 200 points higher than ours, which was still pretty much unachievable for us. And then he went and posted that 16,000 score. So I mean, the race is done. Like that's it. There's, there's no catching up. But Linus is now first on the single card benchmarks. And by first, I mean first of the three YouTubers that are involved in this competition. He's not anywhere close to actual first. That's Kingpin, who is really more like a zero because. It's, he's always there, so it's just a constant at this point. So we can't have Linus be ahead of us <laughs> in any scores, let alone single card. And uh, I didn't know, you know, like I said, I didn't know it was a competition, so I guess we'll make it a competition now. And I bring to you, again, the Ice Bucket, the, uh, the our version of the Ice Bucket Challenge, as it were. And so Linus, enjoy your place on the top while you can, I guess, because uh, our plan is to post a, a higher number during this stream, and hopefully pretty soon. We'll see, though. Um, so all right, here's what we got. I'm going to be switching this NVLink bridge out for a different one at some point in the stream, if I remember. But um, if you haven't seen it, quick recap. We have everything. I don't even know where to start. We have everything going into an ice bucket. And I'll just walk you through this before we turn it all on and it gets loud. So ice bucket's over here. We'll start the benchmarking momentarily. And I'll check chat in a moment, too. I'm, I'm away from the screen right now. So this is actually really cold. We, did, we need to put more ice in here. We'll be doing that kind of before, as the stream gets going. So you're going to have to deal with that noise for a second. But we need to put more ice in. We have now two 560s. So we replaced the 360 thermal take radiator that was in here for the CPU with a 560 EK radiator that's a bit fatter. And the point of that was really just so that we could get, I mean, get them completely flat. I extended the tubes, worked with Patrick on that. So we put in QDCs. 
and extended the tube length. That way we could get the CPU cooler properly submerged because it was not before. It was sticking halfway out of the ice and that was increasing our temperatures a bit. So that's the ice bucket that needs to be filled up again. Then we have an EK pump for uh, pump and res combo for the CPU. We have a res and a dual pump down there for the GPU. We have two GPUs on the loop using supremacy blocks. We have a supremacy block on the CPU. We borrowed one of these from our Patreon backer, Richie C77. Thank you very much, Richie. Richie, by the way, is I think number three on the single card score. So we'll be uh, heading up his direction today with our benchmarks. So really cool to have members of the XOC community in our, in our Patreon group like that. Uh, so that's most of it. G Skill Trident Z Black's in here. I got new memory today. Uh, did quick testing. I couldn't get it to post as good timings as this kit. So we're going to stick with that kit. That's a 3600 kit that I overclocked to 4000 megahertz. We'll go over all the settings during the stream and then a couple fans all over the board. So that, co let me mute this. That covers the system as it is right now. And uh, let me see. Oh, is Jay, um, Jay has texted me. Hang on. Okay. All right, Jay, I got your message. If you're, if you're watching, I got it. I think we're about to see Jay upload a new score. Uh, and let's, um, I'll open up the 3D Mark Hall of Fame. We can look at that. Uh, so let me, let's, let's check. Let's check what the Hall of Fame is if he's uploaded it yet. How is Jay texting you from beyond the grave? <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah, rip is not actually literally ripping people. Um, so I'm just opening up 3D, 3D Mark Hall of Fame, and we're going to see where Jay stands right now and where Linus stands, and then beat them both. Uh, by the way, so I was talking with Hall oh, of Fame's down, seriously? Stop, stop, stop killing the website. I need it. <laughs> um, I had a message that would be like, hey guys, can you, uh, you like get better servers for me or something? Because, all right. So, uh, before we get started, let me show off some of our um, some of our casualties. Jay had a casualty in some of his setup, or well, I don't know. Jay, did you recover it finally? If you're in chat, I know for a little while he thought he had CPU degradation, and then I think he ended up correcting it or found out it was like a Windows bug or something. And maybe the CPU is actually fine after all. I'm not sure, but we did have a casualty a couple days ago, and it was a gentle typhoon fan. Uh, so. Where that Noxo one is on the bench right now, that's just screwed into the bench. I sat this one, and um, it was stable. Like I didn't need to screw it in or anything. It was stable like that. But eventually, one of the wires moved, or a tube like drooped and moved the wire. And so what happened is a collision. This yes, the F's F's for F's for Hall of Fame apparently, but also F for the Gentle Typhoon fan. I bought more of these because I like these fans so much. But uh, and I couldn't be without one. But um, this blade collided directly with one of our Corsair Maglev fans, the ML140 we had. And that's a lot of Fs. And um, so the Maglev fan won. I guess that speaks to Corsair's engineering on the, on the ML series fan. I know their thermal engineer who worked on designing it has always been very proud when he's told me about how strong the blades are on it. And I've always just been kind of like, yeah, but who cares? Like, who, who cares how strong the blades are? Well, apparently. There are occasionally reasons that you care how strong the blades are. Uh, so yes, sad, sadly we lost that fan, but we, I bought some more for it. So respects paid for that fan. <laughs> Thank you very much, chat. Um, OK, so I'm waiting. I, well, I, I won't wait too long, but I'm trying to get the Hall of Fame to load. And if it won't load, I'll just go to, I'll just go to um, Twitter, and we'll check Linus's tweet there. Let me see if Jay sent anything else. I think. Uh, I don't know. Jay, if you're watching, I can't get Hall of Fame to load. Feel free to just text me the numbers you got, and I'll read them on the, on the stream. Um, all right. So let me open up the tweet that Linus's team sent out so we at least have some perspective as to why we're going to respond to them first. <laughs> and, uh, and then we'll go into the benchmarking and actually do it. So let's see. Where is, where's your tweet, Linus? So they have something on Floatplane. And they sent out a teaser. Let me show their teaser first. Uh, we don't have a direct feed of this, so you're just going to have to look at the screen. But let me, uh, let me get this situated so you can see what, what they're up to. OK, you ready, Andrew, for a screen, a, a non-literal screenshot? Um, OK, so can you see that OK, or is there glare? They posted this. I'm, I'm not going to adjust the brightness or anything. We'll just look at this briefly. 
if you can't see it, it's on float plane. It's like an ice bucket, uh, or it's a cooler anyway. I don't know what they have in it. They have some fat radiator they hooked up maybe to an AC unit or an old chiller. I don't know what's going on. But either way, that was one of their things they posted. And then they also did, where is it? Where did they say mic drop? How long ago is this? Oh, there it is. OK, here you go. Here's, here's where Linus Tech Tips tried to throw some shade uh, and then tripped on the shade they threw. So drops, dot, 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 mic. And why are they dropping the mic? Because they took seventh in a benchmark no one is competing in. <laughs> so we're going to respond to that today. Uh, Linus got 83.60, so full credit to them. That's a pretty good score. Uh, Jay's up there with 83.21. That's before Jay or I were, were really trying with, the, with anything, really, with ice buckets or any of that stuff. So that was when we were first just playing around. Actually, mine was Titan V. Uh, and Jay says, so by the way, uh, we can't get, he can't get uh, time or the Hall of Fame to load either. Jay's score is 15,234, which is really good. Our score on the Hall of Fame right now is 15,242. So uh, Jay's serious, serious uh, competition there. And I've really enjoyed keeping it kind of like, you know, as we got more into this, uh, I was thinking about how, is there a way we can keep this going without getting to LN2 levels? Because at that point, it's just like, the time sink is massive, and both of us would need to work with companies to bring in LN2, or at least I would anyway. He might have a hookup already. And, uh, and so we're pushing as far as we can without going that route for now. And who knows, maybe we'll collaborate with uh, at the EVGA HQ or something later down the line. OK, so that's the scores. We need to beat Linus first. I'll pull his up again in a bit. And uh, super glue the blade to the fan. It's, it's really not that important. Oh, thank you. Der Bauer's score, 16,248, for anyone who's wondering. We're not going to be beating that today. But let's start with, with uh, the ripping Linus score. And we need to put ice in the bucket. A couple super chats first. Uh, Bill Wanchalo, 6969. Sadly, can't watch the stream, just dropping by. Good luck with the OCs. Thank you, Bill. Uh, five, that's also, that's a very generous donation. Thank you. Adam Schumann, senior, $5. Make them Dunsky, yes. If you, if you didn't see the last stream, we were talking about Kingpin jumped into chat, which was awesome. And uh, Kingpin, I, I brought up how when he was overclocking with Roboclocker, at Computex, every time it would blue screen, he thought it was dead from condensation, which is why we have all the wrapped tubes, too. And he'd say, she's done ski, Steve. She's done ski. And then revive it again. Uh, Zachary Applegate, two bucks. Let's get him. Thank you very much. We'll do that in a moment. Uh, Yuvistrov, MX20. Blood, Steve. We need blood. Bit extreme. ZDG. Good to see you, ZDG. Thanks for dropping in. He's one of our Patreon backers. Uh, we, the Patreon group built him a computer not long ago. ZDG, 10 bucks. Sacrifices to the OC gods must be in blood or coffee. Really, you guys, you guys have a bit of a thing for blood, and it's kind of weird. Bill Wanchalo, two bucks. Press F for dead boy. Uh, Idlevice, five dollars. Is your nut big enough now? Referencing the nut that I was attaching to a screw, which was the wrong size in the last video. Howard Gray, twelve bucks. Psycho OC was here. All right, uh, that's. That, I'll stop there for now. So we got a good chat going here. Um, Let's fill the, fill the bucket, I guess. And I'll chop this out quick as well. If you're watching the stream, and uh, I can't guarantee it, but if you buy something from the GN store on store.gamersnexus.net during the stream, I will try to shout it out. So I'm going to keep an eye on store orders. And uh, depending on how many there are, how busy I am with the OC machine, I'll try and shout out your first name and where you're from if you buy anything on store.gamersnexus.net. So OK, uh, I need an ice bag. And then we're going to fill that bucket up. <clears throat> so I'm just. I'm walking off shot to the freezer. <laughs> and this might be loud momentarily uh, when we dump it in the ice bucket. But it's going to be part of what we're doing today. So there's, there's our first sacrifice to the OC bucket. <laughs> and um, I don't really want to go outside and drop this on the concrete during the stream. So we'll just kind of think this is how hammers are supposed to be used. I'm just breaking up the ice so it falls in more gracefully. OK. All right. Hopefully it doesn't just rip open on the carpet. And we're also, of course, watching for a splash onto the bench. So uh, I'm going to apologize in advance for 
the noise of dumping ice. I'll try and keep it quiet for you. <laughs> Any splash? I think we're good. No splash on the bench. Okay, so there's the first bag. Is the bench unwet? Yes, it appears fine. All right, one more bag of ice. Then we have some more if we need them later. Uh, and we have a drain in that bucket, which has become very useful. So all I'm doing right now is filling this thing with ice, putting 20 pounds on there to start, and this will start our OC versus Linus. Let me check what the chat's saying right now. What's chat saying? Are you using salt in the water too? Uh, no, not right now. No, we are not. Did Roman stuff arrive yet? No. Roman, aka Der Bauer, did send something, and I don't think he's revealed what it is, so I won't either. Um, we, if it got here, it got here today, and I haven't seen it yet, but I don't think it did. And we'll be looking at that probably after doing some of our normal reviews, because we are pretty behind on reviews from this. So this is going to be the last time for now. That's still very frozen. Last time for now that you're going to see this, uh, this beast of a machine before we have to go back to normal content production. I'm sure there's a mix of people. Some people are probably happy about that if you're bored with this, and some people are probably looking forward to more. But we'll try and appeal to everyone as we continue to make content. All right. Put a big block here that would put a hole in the radiator. So just kind of put that one down carefully. This is the last bag I'm going to empty before we start going with the overclock. So we really need more water volume in here right now, but uh, clearly this will turn into water. Um, so we should be fine. The biggest problem is when the water that gets hot doesn't move around the radiators, and then, uh, then obviously it'll get warmer. But I have a pond pump in there that should help. We have a little bit of water in there. And I think we can probably start going. So let me turn this bench on and uh, kick things off. Hopefully no water splashed on there. OK. Bench needs to be on. Is it plugged in over there? Yellow power strips on, yes? <clears throat> No? OK. I thought your lights were plugged in there. OK, we're turning the bench on. That is really cold water. My hand is freezing. OK. Yes, the, the pumps are all on. They're all connected to the same power supply. We're just using one PSU. 1600Y, AX1600I. Uh, 1600 I actually I should check the power draw during the stream, maybe. I'm not sure what we're drawing, but it's a lot. So. Uh, you should disable Spectre and Meltdown patches. Yes, I know. We've, we've disabled quite a few things. Uh, those actually aren't two of them, though. I didn't disable those explicitly. So that is, but we're not going to do that today. It's fine. Um, did using a six-pin auxiliary power, this is from uh, MacDrew421, 4, 4, did using six-pin auxiliary power on the motherboard add any stability improvements to PCIe power? I saw Jay was using it. We are, too. I don't know. I mean, I've talked to Bill Zoid about that in the past, and I think his conclusion is that the extra six pin PCIe doesn't really do a whole lot, um, at least unless, I don't know. It's really a problem where you're adding that pin because you don't want to pull all your power, in this case 150 watts max, through the 24 pin connector. So if you have like four cards, it's probably useful, but it depends how much power those are sucking down through the PCIe slot because it's really only adding there. Um, I don't know. Like it, it might. We're kind of getting into like hocus pocus territory with <laughs> overclocking, where you just start doing things just because they might do something, but you're not actually sure. So that's kind of where we are right now. Uh, I genuinely am unsure if if that's helping or not. But we have it plugged in. And then for the bench, so the X299 dark board we're using has a set of switches on it. That uh, sorry about the fan noise, but you know part part of what we're doing here. So it's got these switches. Where are they? I can't see them from here. They're down there. They're like kind of under the first video card. You're not really going to be able to see them from that angle, but uh, that's OK. So there's uh, how many? Six, five or six switches down there. And they're just dip switches. And all they do is they toggle the PCIe slots by hardware on and off. So what I've done right now is I have toggled off all PCIe slots, except for the first one, 
which will allow us to challenge Linus' single card score without having to remove the card. And it will also disable it physically on a hardware level so we don't have to worry about the NVIDIA SLI software getting buggy. So that's, that's part of what we're doing. And I need to, uh, I, you know, let's, let's just do like a simple OC first. Actually, you know, let's just run it with, with the CPU and no present GPU overclock at all. Just see where it lands, single card. It should be like 6,500, something like that point. And uh, then after that, I'm going to beat Linus to score pretty much immediately. <laughs> so as long as everything stays stable anyway. So hopefully it does. Um, OK. So where is Hall of Fame working yet? That's the first question. Proxy error on 3 Mark's website. Stop. Stop it. Stop breaking it. <laughs> I need it. Uh, let me open up Linus's page again. Twitter.com slash Linus Tech. And of course, uh, it's all friendly competition. We very much appreciate that Linus and Jay have contributed to this. Jay, I was talking with him, and both of us feel like we've learned a lot from this whole adventure. So we really appreciate the audience kind of uh, enjoying this and, and sharing it with us, because I, mean, I, I think, Jay, I can at least speak partially for you here, but uh, not too much, of course. But I know when I was talking with Jay, we were just saying how this is really uh, pushing us to learn a lot more about overclocking. And speaking for myself, that will greatly help GN's review process for parts. Because like now, I mean, I've learned a lot in the last week. I've learned about memory straps, for example. So Ken Penn was in chat teaching us about that. Where and If you're just joining, we're running a uh, baseline test right now, by the way. It's not doing anything special. It's uh, overclock on the CPU, ice bucket. What temperature is our water at? And uh, it's kind of hot, 1.7 degrees Celsius. Uh, and uh, yeah, so just overclock on the CPU and the memory, nothing on the GPUs just yet. So we're just going to see where it lands. Um, anyway, so learning uh, memory straps. That's one of the things we learned about. So I think on, it should be the same strap, but for an example off the top of my head, I think at one point I found that like 980 megahertz was scoring better than 1,000 megahertz offset, that is, on the cards we were using, the 2080 Ti's. And uh, that's because it's, it's kind of like a landing pad where you kind of shoot for a certain frequency offset and either you land on the memory strap or you don't. And depending on that, you might actually get slightly worse performance with a higher number. Uh, so it's better to step back down something like 980 versus 1,000. So we, if you miss the content, we've been able to get up to a 1240 megahertz offset on the memory. <laughs> and uh, originally, before going liquid for everything, we were stuck at 980 to, I think, about 1,005 megahertz on the XC Ultra. So pretty big improvement. And the core is more stable. The core is underwater. Uh, we have a, a, a couple of memory blocks on here. This is not, by the way, the, the best way to measure temperature. Neither is a thermal camera. I know a lot of people like to use them. They're good for like a really quick spot check. But the problem is emissivity and reflectivity. So if you point like a thermal camera or this at a reflective surface or a shiny surface, then uh, you might actually get reflected room temperature instead. So like if I take a thermal camera and point it at an aluminum heat sink, it's going to reflect more room temperature than the heat sink temperature. But this is fine for black body measurements of like, uh, like an SMD, for example, a, a matte black device that just gets, um, in this case, you just hit it with the pointer and it's, it's fine. Like it's not great. Thermal couple would be better, but I can't really get T couples in there anymore because it's all surrounded in fans. So the side of the memory module I'm reading, the hottest module we have is currently, is it running a test even? No, it's about to run a memory test. But uh, in between tests, we're at about 12 degrees Celsius. And so the reason that's interesting, did it not even finish? OK, what a crash on CPU. All right, cool. Let me boot in and see what's going on with CPU settings. Maybe I was playing around. So the reason, um, the reason that's interesting is because we're below ambient temperature with devices that are not cooled by the chilled water. And that's just because the, the block that's on there that's connected to the chilled water is able to cool everything around it to an extent that it's going below ambient. Uh, so even our memory is benefiting from this. I mean, if you think about it, it's all copper traces inside a PCB anyway. There's a lot of layers inside the PCB. And those are feeding into everything. So it's eventually making its way. Oh, there we go. That's why I had this set too high. Uh, so it's eventually making its way into the, um, the memory and the VRM and everything. 1.46, I think, is unnecessary for this. Uh, so let's step that down. 
And I think all these other voltages are still good. I think that was the problem. Uh, everything else looks fine. So let's, let's go back and try that. It looks like I had two cores that were still offset too high from when I was really, uh, really pushing a little too hard. Someone says 3D Mark Hall of Fame is back up. So before it dies again, uh, I need this. Don't go. <laughs> Don't go there. I need it. I'll show it on the screen. Um, <laughs> leave it alone. Damn it. It's down. Uh, so we got one to load. We got the two card scores to load, I guess. I'll show that while the, uh, the thing's opening up over there. So we're not doing capture, sorry, of the screens. Too much work right now with all the other stuff we have going on. All right, so can you see that okay? We've got, this is two card. This is not what we're gonna challenge Linus in right now. Uh, two card, Der Bauer, of course, Roman. If you know him from, uh, he's on YouTube. He's, he's German, he's got a Taiwan flag there because he's in Taipei right now working at Asus HQ with some over overclockers, other overclockers, excuse me. And uh, so that's why that's showing up, it's IP based. I don't know why can, Canada is showing up for Jay and Paul. Maybe it doesn't understand that CA for California doesn't mean Canada. So De Bauer is 16,248. He has an absurdly high GBU score. We're not going to be able to beat it. We're in second still for two card. Jay, did your score upload? It did. 15,234. So uh, serious uh, uh, improvements for Jay's score, for our score the last few days. Jay has been, I think he's been experimenting with dry ice. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that video, Jay, if you post it. And Jay's two cents, if you don't know who he is, of course, is on YouTube. And then single card. We have uh, KP at the top. So this is Kane Penn. He works for EVGA. He is uh, unbeatable for us and most other people. 9,300 points. And then we have Richie from our Patreon group in there. He sent over some water blocks because we, we were uh, kind of limited on those resources. He's at 8,805. And then Linus is in seventh at, I can't even read that from here, 8,360. And then we have Jay, who, as I said, hasn't tried recently at 8,321. And we're down here with the Titan V at 8,285. So, okay. Let's go ahead and just post that baseline now that I hopefully corrected the CPU clocks. It was a little too, too aggressive for this. So we're just going to let that run this time without crashes. It crashed in the CPU test, so that was pretty clearly the problem. And then I'll show you some of the overclocking trips, uh, tricks I've learned over the last few days from the experts in the space. Uh, we, of course, are nowhere close to their level, but um, it is, uh, it's a lot. Of, it's, it's pretty enlightening to learn from them, and I have a ton of respect for uh, for everyone in the XOC space. I mean, like, Bill Zoid, Der Bauer, Kane Pin, everyone, because just, like, even just doing this, which isn't even dry ice or LN2, it was a lot of work. <laughs> it's not easy. Uh, and Der Bauer said in his video, which you should watch if you haven't, that um, that the Linus Tech Tips just posted, did they? What did they post? Um, Der Bauer said, you know, it wasn't easy for him either. He had to do a lot of work to get his score where it is. Did they post it? No, why'd you say that? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, we've got a couple store orders. Thank you very much. This is running now, baseline test. We have the CPU at 5.0, 5.0 for the first two cores. What is it? No, 5.1 for the first two cores. 5.0 for the remaining 16 cores. We're on a 7980XE. Get that meme out of the way. And uh, that's pretty decently overclocked right now. We could not get this high without the chilled water. And I'm not looking at CPU temps right now, so I hope it's okay. But our water temperature is still kind of hot for my taste. It's 1.1 degrees Celsius. And the loop temperature for the GPU is 3.3 degrees. We have two thermocouples in there. Uh, so if you're curious, can you, even, can you see that screen? Top one is the ice bucket. And then bottom left, which you probably can't read from there, is going to be the loop temperature. And we have a K-type thermocouple floating in this res over here. So that's a K-type thermocouple. It's just got some captain tape on the end of it. Uh, and that's reading our reservoir temperature. This is pretty much the hottest point in the loop. We're very close to it because this is after the GPU. So that's going to be some of the hottest water in there, uh, if you're curious. And K-type thermocouples, if you didn't know, they're extremely useful for uh, everything. But they're really useful for, for example, like VRM thermal testing, which we do, but K-types have some variants. So they have about a plus or minus 2.2 degrees Celsius range in manufacturing of a K-type thermocouple. So uh, if your baseline is, say, so let's say we're measuring something that is a known zero degree Celsius temperature, you might have your, your least accurate two K-types at negative 2.2 and plus 2.2, but they are perfectly inaccurate. So when a K-type is inaccurate, it is always inaccurate to that same degree. So if it's always plus 0.5 off, then it's not gonna change. Uh, it's not like it's a plus or minus 2.2 variance within the same thermocouple, in other words. So anyway, that's, um, 
that one's calibrated, so that, that measurement's where you want it to be. And then uh, also, I'm going to go through some super chats, through some store purchases, stuff like that. I also want to give a quick shout out. So Engadget is kind of a mainstream you know, tech publication. Engadget ran an article that was actually very, uh, very kind about all of this overclocking stuff. And they talked, I think the headline was, uh, what was it, like overclocking makes surprisingly good TV or something like that. And so it, anyway, I wanted to point that out. We really appreciate that some of the more like uh, mainstream, bigger tech outlets are looking at this because we think it's fun. So I'm glad other people like it too. OK, so a couple things. We're running CPU test now. Hopefully it doesn't crash this time. Uh, I've got a few store orders. So Michael from uh, Beverly in, uh, in the US purchased a mod mat. Thank you very much, Michael. So that's the anti-static mod mat, the one I have on the table. Really, it's more of a, it's, it's a high quality building service. We've been selling it for about a year now. And we're, we, we like it a lot. It's, it's done well. Uh, if they hold up to all of our damage. So thank you, Michael, for buying one of those. They are shipping now. We're not on back order anymore. We got them in. We got a store order for two of our ceramic mugs, which I have back here as well. So we got two of the mugs in. And that is from, or purchased from uh, Jerry in Oklahoma. Thank you, Jerry, for buying that. Really appreciate it. Does not come with a dead stick of memory in there. We took the other one apart to use for an animation coming up for our part two of our uh, memory timing series. So if you rec if you notice that one of the sticks is gone, that's where it went. <laughs> We're animating some RAM. Uh, Robert from, what is that, Utah? Purchased some stickers and decals. Thank you very much, Robert. And then we got another order from Richard in uh, the UK who purchased an autographed mod map now, I'm actually driving over there tomorrow to sign a bunch of mod maps for people who bought them. So thank you for picking that up, uh, Richard, in the UK. All right, so this just finished its pass. Here's where our baseline is. This is no, no nothing. This is just the CPU overclock. Uh, CPU is at 12,437. This is single card testing. We're at 76.23. And our graphics is only 71.36, but we know we can get a lot higher than that. And Linus's score, if I can get it to even open, uh, I have their Twitter page open. So Linus' score was 8360. And I, what I really need to know is what's their score individually for graphics and CPU. But they're 8360. We're at 7623 right here, which is below, I think, even our previous. Yeah, it's below our Titan V score. So clearly, we have a lot of room. Let's just go ahead and see what we can make happen here uh, with a, a quick overclock. Hopefully, it's still stable. I haven't, haven't run this since it obviously booted. So sometimes the clocks kind of seem like they change a bit. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to set some hotkeys, and I'm going to use those to my full advantage to try and make sure we push Linus' score down as much as possible, because just beating it wouldn't really be that fun. we got to go as far as we can. 11.30, so I'm going to set this for, what do I want this for? 1, and then I want a 170 offset with a 12. Let's do 1220 on the memory. I know it can hold 1240, but it's been kind of having some problems today. So let's go 1220 on the memory offset. Still very high. Can't be mad at that, really. I'm going to set that for profile 8. We're going to go to 1, 165 and 1180. So 165 is going to be our GPU core offset. Memory, we're offsetting by 1180 megahertz. And that will go for profile 7. And I'll, I'll t walk you through why I'm doing this in a moment. Because uh, you probably, I don't know, I, I never heard of this before this week. So this is something I learned that's actually really fun. It makes it more like a game, like an RTS than anything. So we want 1160 for this and 175 for the core. That's going to be profile four. And then we want 165 and we want 1160. Is that 1160? Yes, for profile six. OK, so now I'm just going to set the hockeys. Hey, uh, Jacob or EVGA, if any of you are watching at EVGA, here's what I want. I want this to save. I don't know if there's a way to do it, but when I try to click the Save button, it doesn't do anything. Maybe I'm on an old version. It's from a few days ago, maybe a week ago. Uh, but I have to retype all that stuff in every time I boot, and it's super annoying. So if anyone from EVGA is watching, please make that, like, just make an export button that saves it to, like, a, I don't know, XML or something so I can import it. It saved me a ton of time. OK, so let me just double check our settings here. So profile 9, this is going to be our boot profile, 140 offset and 1180 on the memory. Power's maxed out. We're on the XC Ultra card, which is uh, shunt modded and underwater. Profile 8, let me check that the hotkeys work. Profile 8, 170 offset core, 1220 on the memory. I think we can do 1240. Profile uh, after that, I'm going to go to 7, is 165 core, 1180 memory. And I'll, I'll again walk through why we're doing this in a moment. 
And then we're at 175 and 1160 for profile four, with profile one being the lightest at 1130 and 140. Okay, cool, everything's working. So let's just go ahead and hopefully it survives this run. It's, it's kind of iffy and we will have artifacting in here. So I'll, I'll take a moment to address that. You see artifacting in these benchmarks, uh, it's still valid. So as long as the score validates in 3D Mark, this is a synthetic test. Nothing about this is real world. We have half the computer in a bucket of ice. So this is not a real world scenario. Um, and if there's artifacting, unlike the real world where of course you would care, it actually doesn't matter as long as it passes and it's not cutting out geometry or meshes or textures or anything like that. If it's just memory artifacting, that's acceptable within TimeSpy's validation process. And I talked to Bill Zoid about this. I said, you know, what's, how would you explain why that's acceptable? And he said, uh, I thought it was a great analogy. He said, I'm pretty sure if you are drag racing, uh, it crashed, okay, so we need to drop that a bit. He said, I'm pretty sure if you drag race and you still make it to the finish line first, but a few pieces of your car came off, you still win. And I think that's actually a great point. So we need to drop one of those a bit. Looks like I should uh, probably dial it back a bit for starting. Hang on, we're gonna have some noise from moving this around. Some of the ice, <laughs> ice melted and... Uh